Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on to the fireside chart. Um, this chart is going to be for the next 20 minutes. Please put your hands together as we bring up on stage Eric Herzman and Max. Guys, a round of applause for them, ladies and gentlemen. All right, thank you. So, uh, yeah, my name is Eric Hersman. Uh, I am the CEO of Gridless. We do Bitcoin mining in East Africa. Um, we do it in Kenya, Malawi, and Zambia. Uh, and we use, electric, we, use, we use Bitcoin mining to push electrification to the edges in, in rural Africa. Uh, we do that by partnering with small power producers who are not, who are not profitable yet. And we go up and we use the rest of the energy that they're, no longer, they're not able to sell to anybody else. So a lot of times what happens is when you have a, a community that doesn't have power, everybody here has been to the rural villages, right? Not everybody has power, right? So um, what we do is we, we go to those same villages, we find a hydro, uh, we find a wind, we find a biomass, uh, we find a geothermal power producer, and we find out that they're only using 20 to 30% of their power. That's what they're selling to everyone. That means there's 70, 80% of their power that's not being utilized, and nobody will utilize it. Because the first thing that somebody does when they get power in the village is what? They put it on an LED light bulb, and they charge their phone. That doesn't use a lot of energy. So what we do is we take up the rest of that energy, and as more people in the community start using electricity, we turn off our Bitcoin miners so that the, the community always comes first for energy usage. So that's what we do as a business. Um, of course, what we also represent to Bitcoin is a, is a decentralization of the hash rate. So hash rate is now coming online in countries and in communities that has never come online before. So it's truly decentralizing the Bitcoin network to places that have never had it before. So that's what I do at Gridless. Um, but I'm also up here with somebody that's really cool, and I'll let him introduce himself. Um, but they are doing some awesome stuff and have been partners with us for about a year. So, Max? I'm, I'm Max. Uh, I'm at Block, and I'm going to talk in this session about hardware that we're building that powers mining. So uh, what Eric highlighted here, uh, when he and his team at Gridless uh, go deploy mining in an area like he described, they need to buy machines that can actually do the mining. So what, we're, what we've decided to do at Block is build a machine that can help serve this need. And the reason we've decided to do this is right now, there are like two options. And that's a serious problem for the decentralization of Bitcoin. So the underlying security of Bitcoin on layer one is, is, is essentially secured by mining. And right now, there are two companies that make silicon. Silicon is the chip that is inside of the mining machines. And they're just a small handful of companies that make the actual mining machines. These are, you know, looks like a computer, has a couple of fans, and has a whole bunch of these custom chips inside of it. And so what we realized is there's actually a threat to the decentralization of Bitcoin. And what we want to do is provide more options for people to purchase chips for people to purchase the mining machines uh, to make applications like this possible. Uh, we are really excited to bring our, our competitive, or our, sorry, our expertise to this. Uh, we have developed chips at, at Block for the payment terminals that we make in one part of our business over many years. We've developed hardware systems uh, in, in the, the payment terminals business that, that we've uh, uh, that, that we run, and uh, we've also developed software extensively in a lot of applications, some of which you guys are familiar with, like Cash App. And uh, we're really excited to bring expertise in all of those technical domains to make another option for people who need mining hardware. Uh, in addition, we're really excited about applications like what Gridless is doing, and a handful of other applications that we'll get to in a minute that right now are really not well served by these two really large companies that make the miners. Uh, we're really interested in selling one miner to folks who want it for these kinds of creative uh, solutions. Um, before we get too far into this, though, uh, I really love real world examples. And we're still building, so I'm going to talk about what we're building. And I want to dive into uh, how, how Gridless has been managing this over the past year. So there's a really exciting like, real world site. And uh, I'd love to turn it back over to Eric and hear more about the the challenges and opportunities that you, you've had. 
So um, when, you're, when you're deploying something into rural Africa, one of the things that you have to think about is, you know, what's the environment like where you're going into, right? So sometimes that can be, you know, there's a lot of dust, maybe there's a lot of heat. Um, and, and often how these things are cooled, how these miners are cooled is with air. So that means you suck a lot of air into the container or the cabinet that you've, that you've put there. And that brings with it a lot of dust. And you know, to, to, you know, we learned a valuable lesson about turning the lights off at night inside the container. <laughs> when, uh, you know, after the rains in Kenya, uh, we get what's called flying ants. I don't know if you have them in West Africa, but the flying ants that come out after the rains. And uh, we left the light on in the container and then it sucked in millions, millions of bugs. And they went straight into our mining machines and we had about, about two inches of bug guts uh, inside of our miners that we took about three days to clean out with toothbrushes to get this thing working again, right? Now, that's an environmental problem that they don't normally have in Texas, right? Um, but we, you know, those are the kind of things that we have to deal with. Oh, we also have to deal with, you know, somebody might want to steal the battery um, for our connectivity link uh, to the mobile tower, t you know, five kilometers away. And they might cut down that pole, and then until we can get a new battery in, we, we're not online. So we have to deal with environmental differences and changes that are, are probably a little bit harder to deal with than elsewhere. And these are the kinds of things that we've been feeding back to the team at Block saying, hey, when you guys build a miner, can you do something that helps us deal with bugs the same way and can do a really good job of handling dust and heat and stuff like that? Now, the cool thing about what, what Block is doing, and th this is, and if, you, if you've been in the software or the hardware space, this is maybe one of the coolest things about what they do is this being done in open, in open development. That means open source software and open source hardware. That means that we can get into this with our software, we can get in and control it. And on the hardware side, that means we can mod it. Now, what kind of cool things are you expecting people to do with the open development that you're working on? Yeah, so there's really two main categories of things that we're really excited about up front. And those two things are things that basically change the economics of Bitcoin mining. So something that, uh, that Eric referred to here uh, with the Texas example is that a lot of hash rate, a lot of the actual mining that's done on the network, is actually not done by projects like Gridless, and that's something we want to change. It's actually done by large industrial mining operations that set up what looks like a data center, and they try to make as controlled of an environment as they can, keep out dust and bugs like, like, like what Gridless has to deal with and run a ton of machines and produce a ton of heat and not use the heat for anything. They're just trying to make money bi mining, mining Bitcoin. And basically the two things that change this equation that we think are uh, great opportunities, not just for us to you know, help serve folks and help enable them, but to, to decentralize the Bitcoin network as well, are basically heat reuse and stranded energy. So heat reuse is, as you might expect, in areas where it's colder, uh, people want to heat their homes in things like one of the potential customers we've talked to uh, operates greenhouses in, in a northern area that gets cold in the winter and they need to heat. Uh, and um, applications like a bathhouse. Uh, we talked to, to one potential customer who uh, needs to heat a bunch of pools. And they actually do that today with a handful of Im miners basically immersed in the water. Uh, but they've had a really tough time setting that system up, getting a hold of hardware in the first place, building the software and gluing it together in a way that'll work for them. And basically what we see is just a ton of opportunity. The, the current set of two manufacturers that make mining machines, they're not focused on these folks. They're not focused on how you can heat your home with this. The second set of applications is stranded energy. We're really excited about that. And so uh, I've, I've really enjoyed meeting a lot of folks uh, from, uh, from this conference who are engaged in finding, and in, and finding stranded energy and deploying miners there. And what that means is that, you know, as, as Eric described, the excess capacity of a big installation can be used to mine Bitcoin. But I want to take one quick step back and talk about like, why, why does that matter? And the reason is it can incentivize those projects in the first place. And so where there wasn't already a hydroelectric operation, being able to say, hey, look, when you set this up, you can mine with the other 70% can help us figure out how to get those projects funded in the first place. And so we're really excited about basically those two categories. Um, 
And as Eric mentioned, when we develop in the open, we can do something really special here. Today, if you deploy miners in a setting like a remote hydroelectric installation and a miner breaks, like it's a big deal. And it might take you a long time to get out there and fix it. It might take you a long time to even know there's a problem. And so the result is to actually get started with this is really hard. And you know, for example, Gridless has a bunch of technical folks and has built an awesome operating system for managing some of these, these types of issues, but still runs into some issues at the hardware level that we think we can help with. And so by sharing documentation, giving out reference designs to help people build systems that incorporate our hardware, we think we can enable, enable a lot more of these types of applications. Um, but there is one thing that I said there that I want to just back up to and, and call out for a minute. A lot of what we're talking about, it's, it's really hard to get started with this. You need capital. You need to be able to get a hold of machines and uh, a whole bunch of help getting started. And I, I think there are some really interesting things we can do to help more people get started. Uh, and one in particular that uh, I heard about recently that I'd, I'd love to turn it over to Eric to share a little bit more about. Well, before I tell, I'm going to talk to you guys about the Gamma a little bit, the Green Africa Mining Alliance. But before we get to that, I want to I want to ask you a question. You know, as you guys have been building out this stuff, what's like the three most creative uses of Bitcoin hardware, Bitcoin mining hardware that you've that you've heard about or come across? I'm just curious because you must have heard of you know a lot of them. Yeah, so, so the one that I, I'm personally most excited about is the kinds of things that I'm hearing about here. Uh, and in particular, enabling stranded energy projects to get built so that we can bring electricity to areas that don't have it, uh, as well as decentralize the Bitcoin network at the same time. Uh, those things, I think, are incredibly important. Uh, there also are things that you know, are maybe a little bit more uh, a, a little bit, a little bit different than this, and, and in between that heat reuse category and the stranded energy category. In fact, actually, just before we came on stage, uh, somebody in the audience uh, came up to me and, and had yet another application that we haven't yet talked about, but we could help enable with the hardware that Block is building. And that was a smart meter for a solar energy system that, if it has excess capacity, could be used to mine Bitcoin. Uh, and you know, in addition, I think heat reuse in home mining is going to be really interesting probably not as relevant here. Uh, but you know, for example, uh, back where I live, uh, it actually gets quite cold in the winter. Uh, and I think that you know, it's true for quite a bit of the northern hemisphere. And so I'm really excited about uh, the kinds of things that uh, we'll be able to partner with lots of folks and bring to market over time. So I come from Kenya, where it's a little bit cooler than it is here in Ghana. And I got to say, you'll never use heat reuse in your home in Ghana, I don't think. All right, so um, one of the cool things that's been going on is, um, you know, there's a, there's a few of us here. There's six different um, Bitcoin mining organizations from across Africa uh, that make up uh, the current membership of Gamma, which is the Green Africa Mining Alliance. Um, this is the shirt. This is our logo. And you'll see people with hats and shirts around that they got them early. I think we ran out already, so sorry. Um, but the idea is that we, we've learned a lot already. And um, we're trying to help other people get started with mining, right? Like mining is a little bit hard to get into. Who here? Raise your hands if you'd like to, if you'd like to start Bitcoin mining. Like, it's like, yeah, so there's like a good third of this room would like to do some Bitcoin mining, right? Like who doesn't want to earn Bitcoin in the cheapest way possible, right? Exactly. Now you have to have access to cheap energy to do so. Um, it, you know, very inexpensive energy, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say you should go steal a line off the power next to your house and just feed it in, but if you do that, you can, you can right? Um, so what we, what we decided to do was come together and, and create a way, like an on-ramp into Bitcoin mining for people to start with one machine even, right? So we're, we're getting old, older used machines, we're refurbishing them, and then making them available to you if you can tell us where you would use this and how would you would put it to work. Um, Jesse Pielke, well, Jesse, can you stand up, please? Jesse is the guy leading this program for us, so you can talk to him more about it. And um, we, have, um, we have an application form on the Gamma website now, which you can fill out. Uh, the program will actually begin in Q1, so in January. Um, we have another person here, I saw him earlier. Is uh, everything Satoshi? Here? Is everything Satoshi? Where's every, where everything Satoshi? 
Yeah. He got the first, he got the first Bitcoin miner yesterday uh, to begin his Bitcoin mining here in Ghana. Okay? So the seed program has begun. And, uh, and what we hope to see is that once you start mining, and you can start with one, and then you get to five, and then you get to ten, that you join Gamma as well and be become part of this story about how you decentralize Bitcoin mining across the world, so across Africa, and we can do it in small stages. It doesn't take a container load to be a Bitcoin miner. You can start with one. And as Jesse says, it's like, we can teach you how to, how to learn uh, less expensively. As everybody learns as we go, we don't know a whole bunch as we get started. Uh, this way you can learn less expensively than those of us who have gone before you. Um, all right, so I want to actually talk one more th about one more thing around the, the block mining. Um, you know, people are going to be asking, like, okay, when can we expect this kind of new miner to become available to us? What are you guys thinking on timing? Yeah, so there are essentially two systems that we're building. The, we're building the silicon and, and the system together, and we, it's going to take us a little while to build a chip, so we didn't talk a lot about how chips are manufactured here, but that process is a very, very long and difficult one. And one of the things that we're doing is instead of waiting for that fully custom system to be ready, we're also building what we call a development kit, or the mining development kit. And that mining development kit is actually based on some mining chips that we already have. Uh, and will be compatible with parts from an uh, existing miner so that we'll deliver boards rather than a whole system and we can do that faster. And so in the first half of next year, we're expecting to launch the mining development kit and we're really interesting, interested in partnering with folks, hearing feedback uh, from folks in the room who are interested in experimenting with this. And something that, that Eric touched on uh, with the seed program is that it takes one miner to get started, not a container not a whole industrial farm. And we're really excited with something like the mining development kit. Right off the bat, we can start by selling just one to folks who want just one miner. And so uh, the best place to follow along with the exact timing of this is our development blog, where we're talking about what we're building and sharing information. And that's at mining.build. So one of, the, one of the things to do here, too, is if you're a software engineer, how many software engineers do we have in the room? Like, Just raise your hand real quick, software engineers. All right, we have a smattering of them. How many hardware engineers? How many electrical engineers? A few? Anyone? All right, so less electrical engineers. Whether you're a software engineer or electrical engineer, you can hack on this stuff, right? And that's, that's kind of the beauty of it, is that you can make it work for you. And be, coming from a hardware background, we, for the last 10 years, we built hardware from the copper plate up, okay? So we understand hardware. The advantage of being able to hack into these things is really, really valuable. Um, when we deploy our what's miners, so that's one of the two big firms. There's, there's MicroBT who makes what's miners, and there's Bitmain who makes ant miners. Um, we can do a limited amount of, of accessing their API and doing some things. The advantages of being able to, to actually have better access to more of the um, features that of the miner means that we can run these things better for our own environment. So what you have in Ghana is going to be different than what I have in my mine in Malawi, which is going to be different than my mine on the edge of the Zambezi River in Zambia, right? It's different for each one, and now you can hack on it. Now you can do something, software-wise or hardware-wise. And I can't. I, I hope you're getting an understanding of how important I think this is, um, because that really personalizes it for our specific needs here, instead of just taking something Chinese off the shelf and deploying it, okay? Um, listen, Block has been a good partner to us for over the last year since we've gotten to know them. I think that they can be a valuable asset to everybody else here on the continent who's trying to get into mining. Um, I think that you should also start asking uh, about Gamma. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's uh, at Gamma underscore Alliance. So Gamma underscore Alliance, okay? Uh, you can ask us any questions there, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. I think that's it for us, Max. Any? Yeah, I think the only other thing I'll add is, you know, we're going to be around for a bunch of today, so if you want to learn more about any of this, come find us. Let's talk. Great. Thank you, guys.